Hey, this is Nicole Kelly, host of Disarming Disability. Thanks for listening to the following show on Public House Media. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Food for Thought podcast. I'm your host, Kylie Thompson. Thank you so much for joining me for another week and another episode. I am thrilled for this guest this week, you guys. I am with Susan Foch. She is the founder and CEO of her own nonprofit organization, Operation Not Alone. She just launched a podcast. She's involved in the Miss America organization. She is truly like the most boss babe of all time. Like I, words cannot describe how amazing and incredible and hardworking she is. And I'm so excited that she took the time to sit down with me and talk about something that's a little bit out of, I feel like what she normally hits on, which is the world of nonprofit. So today her and I are talking about being in the Miss America organization and body image specifically. I know I've touched on this with other MAO competitors, but The special thing about Susan is that she's out of the organization now, so I get to learn a little bit about her pre-Miss America, while she's in the middle of it, and then post-Miss America journey. And truly, she just says so many amazing things about body image and loving yourself and finding your self-worth outside of, you know, the organizations that you know and you're familiar with, which is a little bit, like, it hits home for me just because I am soon going to be done in the Miss America organization as of 2022. So I really am looking forward to seeing how, you know, how I see myself changes after I leave the organization and talking to Susan about that. It's a transition that not a ton of people talk about. So I'm very excited for this episode. And then we do allude to another episode. So I'm just going to tell you right now, Susan is so cool that she gets two episodes back to back. So join us next week to talk about dating and relationships and dating apps while you know, having maybe a negative body image or how to love yourself while you're trying to find somebody else to love as well. So that's going to be next week. But this week, we are diving right into the Miss America organization and body image. All right, everyone. I have the official queen, Susan Foch, here today. How are you, baby? Oh my gosh, I'm good. How are you, hon? I'm good. Yeah, Susan, why don't you just... Tell everyone about yourself. What do you want the people to know before we get into the actual episode? Sure. Well, I am currently splitting my time between Door County and Madison, Wisconsin. So my hometown and my chosen town, (laughs) if you want to call it that. And thanks to COVID, I graduated from the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh with my bachelor's in human services leadership and business. And then I just graduated in June with my master's in public policy from Northwestern, which I was very excited about. (laughs) I just launched my own podcast called the Make an Impact podcast, which is all about things nonprofit and social entrepreneurship. And from that, I've also launched a very fresh uh, nonprofit consulting business, which I'm thrilled about and I'm loving. And all of that really ties into the eight years that I was involved as a competitor for MAO. And now I sit on three local boards as a volunteer and a mentor. So So Susan is the busiest woman of all time. Like when I, (laughs) Susan, when I describe you to people, I'm like, she, I don't understand how you get it all done and you do everything so (laughs) well. And so thoroughly, it's like, I feel like it, you're just impossible to achieve. Like, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you manage. And like, Susan is everything I, I want to be as a human being. She's amazing. Um, but yeah, so she mentioned that she has been in the Miss America organization, and that's actually how we met. And so her episode's going to be broken up into two segments for you guys. The first half today is going to be about Miss America, body image during that time. And then we're going to segue into it, dating and relationships and body image. So yeah, Susan... Like, do you want to just run through your Miss America experience for the listeners so that we know what we're getting into? Yeah, first, but first, I'm going to clap back at what you said. I do not do all things flawlessly, and there's actually a lot of, like, garbage that happens, which is how the rest of it happens, because I'm not, I'm kind of a perfectionist, but not really. Like, sometimes I'm just like, you know what? It's not great, but it's done, and we, like, slap a coat of paint on it and just move on. (laughs) Um, So just, like, (laughs) to make that clear, 
But so I started competing in MAO all the way back as a wee infant in 2012. I was a senior in high school and I started out the way I think most girls start out, at least in Wisconsin which was hearing about scholarships. I am a first generation low income student. And so my parents were always really encouraging of education to my brother and I growing up. And they're like, you can be whatever you want to be, do whatever you want to do, but you need an education (laughs) because we Mm -hmm. didn't have that opportunity and you do. So go get it. But also we don't have money for you to go get it. So if you want it, you got to hustle for it. So I was like, okay. So I was like a really obnoxious um, 17 year old. And I kind of forgot about this until someone from my high school like commented on a Facebook post or something and they're like I remember you in the library with like your really obnoxious spreadsheets of like every single scholarship that I applied for under the sun because I was like yeah because we didn't have money that sounds (laughs) I I can picture that in my head of you doing that for sure (laughs) who's the spreadsheet queen oh yeah but here's the thing now nerds always (laughs) knock out on top because your girl ended up grad again I was a low income first generation student and I graduated debt free with my bachelor's degree from UW Oshkosh and your girl did five years. I did a little victory lap. So That's amazing. <laughs> so the spreadsheets work. Mm-hmm. And Miss so my hometown title was Miss Door County and that was one of them. I had a girl who had competed the year before came up to me and was like, you know, I think that you would be good at this. I think that you would like it. And there is a lot of scholarship money involved for Miss Door County. It's one of the top local competitions like in the state of Wisconsin I think at that time too it was the top one Mm -hmm. because the year before that uh so Mr. County 2011 had won like fifty seven hundred dollars for winning like at that time it was like an incredible amount of money for a local was going out and so and my own and I was like oh I can't do a pageant I was like that sounds I'm not I've never been on a stage I don't have a talent I don't know what to do and the girl was like well look at it this way every single girl who competes gets scholarship money. So even if you are last place, fall on your face, you will still earn money. And I was like, now I'm sold. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I can suck, but I'll earn some money. So that's fine. So I did it. And to my surprise, I was second runner up and I won a thousand dollar scholarship. And I was like, peachy keen, jelly bean, we're going to peace on out. That's fine. Because I tried and I won something and I'm good. And then I had a woman. So we had a reception at Mr. County at the Yacht Club because (laughs) Door County. And it was like midnight and I was so freaking tired. Like it's, you know, pageant days are like, it's a Mm -hmm. long day. And at that point too, it was like, we had to get there at like 10 in the morning. The show was at seven. It was already mid. It was just such a long day. And this woman came up to me and cornered me as I'm trying to like make my rounds of goodbyes. (laughs) And she corners me in the Yacht Club and goes, I know that you don't know who I am. And I totally forgot her name at that point. I was like, what? Um, she's like, I know that you don't know who I am, but I've been involved with the Miss America organization for over 50 years. And I have judged former Miss Americas. You have the Miss America it factor and you need to keep going and keep trying. And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> and then she told me what an open pageant was, which I literally only knew that Mr. County existed. Mm-hmm. I say this a lot. When I started, I only knew that there was Mr. County. I didn't know that Mr. County went to Miss Wisconsin, who went to Miss America, who did all- I just thought it was like a cute hometown thing. I didn't know that there was like a ripple effect. So mm-hmm. I really didn't know what an open pageant was. And she gave me the card of Joel Andelman, who was the director of Miss Fox River Valley and Miss Heart of the Valley. And she was like, this is close to you. It's coming up next month call him do it and I was like okay (laughs) I was like if you think I can do it I guess I'll try again because I already had all the stuff yeah whatever so the funny part to all of that is so I you know then I got like the pageant bug right and for the next six years I went on a fun journey of competing every single year and I would bounce back and forth between my hometown of Miss Star County and my college town of Miss Oshkosh and open pageants in between and your girl got stuck in the rut of being first runner up every single year <laughs> no matter what pageant I did where I was I was always a runner up uh, but the fun part to that was I was gaining scholarship money like that was thousands of dollars I was still earning even though I wasn't winning so I was semi fine trucking along And finally, in 2017, I won my hometown title that started it all. And then I went on to have two more titles after that before I finally aged out. And then they 
Well, they can't kick me out because now I serve on some boards. (laughs) They ain't rid of me yet. (laughs) And this is not related to like body image or anything, but I just need to say, I want you to send me that video of you winning Mr. County so I can post it on like a story or something because when I tell you guys watching that video, like you, I guarantee you'll send it to me and I will cry because (laughs) I met Susan in... 2015. I don't remember if it was at Miss Wisconsin, if you were there that year, or if like, I don't know if I met you in the audience of Miss Wisconsin or Miss Beloit. I don't remember when I met you, but it was one, like it was somewhere in there. And I remember I was like, this girl's so cool. And then I started following her on social media and like was obsessed. And then we competed together at Miss Green Bay area. My first year, I, I think that was the first year we did it. Actually, back that up. We competed the first time the year before that at Sweeps, Sweeps. in 2016. Oh, God. I, and we had, like, I forget about Sweeps. Other. Sweeps was, <laughs> I black out that memory because it was the, I mean, like, I was so new to pageantry. And this was, like, for those of you that aren't in the pageant circuit, um, Miss Wisconsin or Miss, you know, whatever your state is, Sweeps is an opportunity for women to get to their state competition. It's kind of like a last hurrah. And they usually give out more than one title. And I was like freshly 18 years old, had no idea what I was doing and everyone else was better than me. And so I blacked that memory out. But I do, I do remember meeting you there as well. I don't know. I don't think that's the first time we met though. Um, but no, I've been obsessed with Susan. We met, but that's the first time we competed together. And that was the the first time that we ever had sweeps. And it was like, 20 to 25 people competed in that and so it was just like and I remember it was very last minute created as well because I remember so my pageant journey is I had won my first local and it was Miss Beloit which was at the end of the pageant like it was always the last pageant in the state and then all of a sudden it was like I was giving up my title in a couple of weeks and I saw on Facebook everyone was like sweeps and my mom's like you have to do it it was the day after I gave up my title as Miss Floyd I literally so I woke up I was like yes I woke up and I was like I guess I'm doing a pageant today and I remember I could pull up pictures of this too because it's hideous I had this beehive I'd cut my hair into a pixie and the hairstylist backstage had teased the heck out of it it was up to the high heavens and was a freaking beehive I like burned those pictures from that competition because that was definitely the worst pageant I'd ever done (laughs) oh my gosh no it just oh but that no I loved it because it was so sweeps and then you're right the next year we did Miss Green Bay together which and that's when we actually I feel like became friends like I knew we we were time together Mm -hmm. I like we were always Instagram friends (laughs) Yes. And that was the first time we got to, yeah, because there's so many like rehearsals for Miss Green Bay. Like, mm-hmm. we finally got to spend actual human time together, which was great. I love that there are pictures of us backstage um, when people ask about, like, you know, the camaraderie mm-hmm. and are we like all mean to each other? And I love pulling up the picture of you, like, doing my lashes. <laughs> like, that one's to- one of my favorites, too. <laughs> I. Oh, such a cute picture. I love that one. But yeah, so Susan yeah. and I have known each other since, I've like known of Susan since 2015, but we knew each other mm-hmm. actually in physical person in like 2016, 2017. And Susan, I feel like I always gravitated towards you because I felt like we have similar body stuff, like body types. And we were two of the only girls at that time in Miss America, or at least like Miss Wisconsin and like on the local level in our state that were competing as curvier girls. Um, Mm -hmm. And then, like, later on, other girls kind of started doing that as well. And, like, I just remember you were a role model for me because it was like, well, she has the balls to do this too, so, like, why wouldn't I? Because we were competing in the time of swimsuit as plus-size ladies, Mm -hmm. which is actually one of my first questions for you is, overall, how do you feel about the elimination of swimsuit? Because I don't think we've discussed this at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, so I was really actually conflicted about it when it happened, Uh, but I'm all for it because, Mm -hmm. and I truly, I remember, I had a feeling like that announcement was coming from Gretchen Carlson, and that was so stressful because that was like a week or two before we left for Miss Wisconsin, like 2018, and everyone was like, are we doing it? Are we not? Like, what is this? And I remember I heard the news, and I was somehow... 
I think it was like 5 a.m. something because I was like the Good Morning America thing. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like in my bed, like watching this on my phone, like waiting for that moment to happen. And I just felt a sense of relief. I remember thinking, awesome. Like I know that I would be the best person for the job of Miss Wisconsin and I would be killer at Miss America and doing the whole year and doing the whole thing. And now I finally feel like I have a fighting chance to do that. Mm -hmm. Like that was how I felt. And then everyone and their mother felt like attacking it and then told everyone who basically supported the elimination of swimsuit that we were like supporting obesity and unhealthy lifestyles and getting away from Miss America and we were tarnishing Miss America. So then I was like, oh, am I supposed to feel shame about this? That like, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, and it was so weird because it, and then there was that stigma of, oh, well, of course you like the elimination of swimsuit because you're like a fat girl. And I was like, rude. <laughs> People said that to you. Someone said that to you? Um, like, not to my face. (laughs) Like, online. Oh, my God. And I actually remember reading something on the Voy boards, which, like, what a regret. And it was something about... It was right when that announcement happened and it was like, well, without swimsuit, but they're really harping on, uh, you know, platform social impact initiatives. And it was like, we don't want the woman who's, you know, necessarily the best in a swimsuit, but is best at their platform. And someone commented and they're like, well, I guess Susan Foch is going to be your next Miss Wisconsin. And I was like, okay, rude. Because I could have done it even with swimsuit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that was my, always my big issue. Was like I won all three of my titles, all three of my locals competing in a swimsuit. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "F you!" Like I can still do both, but like it, it, I don't know. So I felt very conflicted because I was like, I I wanted to prove that I could still do it in a swimsuit, and that also it had nothing to do with like fat shaming or fat mm-hmm. like endorsing or like whatever um but then at the same time I was like well this, it's gonna make it easier to like put me as an actual uh like for thought of a competitor does that mm-hmm. make sense yeah it so, totally does yeah, so yeah. That, where I was on that yeah and I remember too just like I felt so conflicted and I still feel this way because I think the only competition I competed in and won without swimsuit was Miss Green Bay Area 29 or yeah 2020 and like I remember after being crowned and like I'm going out to eat with my family and friends and like my mom's talking to me about it and all of those years I had competed for this local in particular like I had won other locals competing for swimsuit but this one in particular they were like well it's because you know you you were one of the heavier girls on stage and so how like you can't expect to win when you look like that in your swimsuit and I remember that used to just make me so mad because literally like my title is Miss Madison for example I competed for Miss Green Bay area same way I did at Miss Madison because the Miss Madison competition was six days later Mm -hmm. like (laughs) I was like I didn't lose or gain any weight I didn't do anything any differently and it's just two different outcomes and so I remember people telling me to give up on the local that I have now because they were like they're just never gonna pick the chubby girl like they're just never gonna do it and I remember when I got crowned this year my mom was like well she's like if they think you're chubby they finally picked you and I was like yeah without swimsuit so like they're kind of freaking right (laughs) like okay (laughs) which makes it which makes it worse because it feels invalidating to mm-hmm. your accomplishment of earning this title and this job, mm-hmm. which sucks because it doesn't mm-hmm. like, like those things aren't actually correlated, but people want to make no. you feel invalidated for earning this, which is yes. pure garbage. Mm-hmm. So let's yeah. go back to Susan circa 2012. What was your first experience like with, Miss America in regards to like your body, your self-confidence, whether it involves swimsuit or not, like first time competing, how did, do you feel like it affected your body image at all? Yeah, for sure. But very differently than how it would in later years. So 17 year old me was fine. Mm -hmm. I was like a normal kid. I was a normal teenager. Like, I don't think I was never like the skinniest kid. And I definitely am not an athlete. Like I did not do sport. I tried for the life of me. There's zero talent and coordination with me in sports. Mm -hmm. Um, And I also just like, don't care. Sorry. Um, But like, I just don't, I'm sorry. And it's just not my thing, which is fine. It's other people saying it's just not my thing. 
And, but I was fine. So I wasn't athletic and I wasn't a skinny kid, but no one in my entire life would have ever described me as like a chubby kid or a chubby teenager. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But people had made small comments to me like throughout high school. I'll never forget one girl looked at me and she was like, you know, Susan, and I went to a very small high school. And she was like, I think that if you were skinny, like I can see your ribs skinny, then like you could be a model. And I remember I took that as a compliment. I was like, oh, thanks for thinking I'm cute. And it wasn't until someone else pointed out to me that that actually was an insult that I was like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like I, (laughs) it was the the forethought in my head. Mm -hmm. And so when Mr. County came around and I knew I had to be in a swimsuit, I was like, okay. And it was, it was truly the first time I ever really thought about it. So I was like, okay, what am I going to do here? And I actually thought it was really great for the first time in my life. My mom and I really like sat down and that was the first time we did research on Mm -hmm. nutrition on the idea that we like, and we found all these things. It's like, you know, you should be eating whole foods, uh, focusing more on whole meals. Like, and one of the things we really tried to focus on was just, you know, that those, the classic advice of like shopping the perimeter of the grocery store, like not eating, um, processed foods as much. Like, so now all of a sudden I was starting to like pack my lunches with, that like whole food idea in mind. Like before this was like a fad thing. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I remember I had like a bunch of little baggies in my like lunch bag that was like, here's all my grapes and here's an apple and here's all these nuts and here's this protein bar. Like it was like all great things. And I didn't Mm -hmm. think about how much I was like eating. I was like, I'm eating because I'm hungry, but here's all these like really happy snacks that I made. And the one problem with that was I was competing against one girl in that competition who definitely was like the mean girl of high school. And also so were all of her friends Mm. and then they, but she had like a super hot body. And so that's when like, they started really judging me for like what I looked like. And they were like, well, you're never going to look as hot as she does in this bathing suit. So that was like number one. So then I was like, and then competitive me was like, I'm gonna work so much harder to like prove all of you wrong. Like, oh my God. (laughs) Right. Was that I had started in a relationship that would go on for the next four years which I know we'll talk about in like the dating half of this, but was um, really ended up being a very abusive relationship. And it was very cruel to my body and how I looked. And, but all these things work together, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like Miss America and this abusive relationship and how I was doing my body. Like they were like uh, waves, you know, like they were feeling each other. And so then he started really judging me for like my body, but it was like hidden in this, like, well, if you want to win, you know, like, this is how much harder you have to work and you have to eat these things. And, uh, and he ate like garbage and he was like, I'm going to sit over here and eat a whole pizza. And he's like, but you should eat this like celery in that corner. And then would like get upset. And he's like, well, it's not fun. It's like, go out to eat with you when I want to have a pizza and you're going to eat a salad. So then I would eat the pizza with him. And then he'd be like, well, you really shouldn't have eaten that. And I was like, what do you want? (laughs) Which one is it? (laughs) And you saying Um, that I've had like seven moments where I feel like I'm in the office. I like look away, like what? Yeah. (laughs) And so, but they really started feeling each other. And, but that was one, but it was the first time I started like, again, like eating whole foods, really working out, doing Mm -hmm. all these things. And I was looking really great and really thin for the first time in my life. Again, I was never like, no one would have ever called me like chubby, but I was, I was really slimming down. And like, there are pictures where that was super obvious. So then going into the next year when I started college is when I really went downhill in like an eating disorder spiral like, because they were both there because mm-hmm. I was so fueled by the competition and this idea like I need to prove all of you people wrong, which had so much to do with how I looked. And then also this like a hole of a guy that was like fueling this down. And so like, I remember, th- I mean, so I went to UW Oshkosh and I remember so first of all, I lived on the 10th floor of my dorm building. I always took the oh. stairs. Unless I was like literally blacking out, like I could not walk anymore. And I, when I say blackout, I'm going to get to that in a minute. I mean like blackout from pure calorie deficit. No. Okay. Okay. I, I was going to say I'm going to get to that. Um, unless, unless I physically could not move my body, then I was taking the stairs. And then I had dance classes and practices. And then I would work out for at least two hours a day every day. And then like also walking on a college campus is more than anywhere else in your life because mm-hmm. you're just hustling around. And then and I really started restricting my eating. I really started restricting my calories. And I was getting very 
very thin. And I actually didn't know this until this year when I started going to therapy and I was talking to my therapist about this and she finally, and I was just telling her some stories of things that I used to do in like 2013, 2014. And she was like, you know, that this was an eating disorder, right? And I was like, well, I know that now. I was like, no one ever told me that or pointed that out to me back then. And she was like, it's called exercise bulimia. And it's a really big problem because I was so overexerting. I I would restrict myself down to about 800 calories a day. And and I thought it was great because it was in good things. It was in a spinach salad with chicken Mm -hmm. and like, you know, some eggs and some veggies. So I was like, I'm eating great things, but I would only eat. And then I got mad at myself if I hit like a thousand calories, I'd be so mad at myself, but I was doing it because I was so starving, Mm -hmm. but then I would work out for two hours and then go to dance and then do this and take all these things. And, but again, so where they all were like coinciding with each other was I would drive myself nuts, like at the gym with these workouts. And then I would have a moment where I would get proud of my self, right? And I would like celebrate my body a little bit. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm looking good. I'm really happy. This is awesome. I remember one time there was this moment I was sitting on the ground where like, uh, like my feet were tucked up like underneath me, but not like yeah. crisscross. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're like kneeling like, kind of. Yeah. But, like, you're because- resting your butt on like your heels. Exactly. Okay. And so like, so in theory, your thigh is like real squishy at that point because you're mm-hmm. just like balancing it. I remember I could hit my leg, not a thing moved on my body, not an ounce moved. And I was so proud and I was like so happy because nothing was moving on my body. And I remember my boyfriend looked at me and he was like, because I said something about like really being proud of my legs because I also I have beautifully shaped legs okay yes, you do like, I'm really like proud of my legs and he looked at me and he like scoffed and he's like you should not be proud of those legs he's like you've got so much more work to do on those and I was like nothing moves I was like what do you mean <laughs> like stop it <laughs> um so they just like and this is where I'm saying like they fueled each other mm-hmm so, you know, my desire to do well in the swimsuit competition and then going home and dating a guy who just made me feel also like more like garbage for my body, mm-hmm. it just became this never ending thought. And that's how I spiraled down so far because he was just so cruel about the way that I looked. And then I became cruel about the way that I looked and I associated it with doing well. I mean, Kylie, I literally, my ponytail was like this thick. I was losing clumps of my hair. The first time someone ever told me about hair extensions was Joel Andelman from that, um, that first, uh, uh, open pageant that I did. And it was because he told me he's like, sweetheart. He was like, you need hair extensions because when you turn around on stage, I can physically see the back of your scalp and it's really uncomfortable. Like I was literally missing so much hair in an audience. You could see like bald patches because I was just starving myself. And uh, so that's why dating and Miss America are like coincide. Cause again, it could, because he, but he also hit it with like, well, if you want to win, if you want to mm-hmm. be successful, it was like, I'm helping you by doing this when really it was just causing this like further and further destruction. Right. That was super long, but that's how those two things correlated. No, oh my gosh, it was all good information though. Um, <laughs> so that was your experience within your first like couple years of Miss I was America. The first three years of Miss America. Okay. That's the hard part was so I was still placing first runner up and I was thin as all get out. I am five three and I want to say at my P competition, I got down to like 110 pounds and they were muscular pounds. They mm-hmm. weren't just like thin pounds. Uh, they were they were muscle and, but I still was being told I needed to lose more weight and I needed to mm-hmm. keep firming up. And I was like, what? but I would sit there and I would listen to it. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I'll just work harder. But in the back of my mind, I was like, what more do you want from me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, there's <laughs> only, there's only like, this is something I've like combated a lot during my pageant journey too. Like there's only so much weight I can lose and there's only so much I can do to make all of these people feel like I could win or like to make myself feel like I could win. Like with, with this local that I tried four times for, it was like, people were saying like, Oh, you can lose this much weight and you can do this and you can do this. And it's like the, between my two years of competing, I lost like 60 pounds because my freshman year of college was rough. And I, all I did was drink and like gain a bunch of weight. And mm-hmm. so then I, everyone was like, well, you know, slim down a little bit and then you'll, you'll win. It'll, mm-hmm. it'll be a no brainer. I lose 50, 60 pounds. Everyone's like, oh, like you still didn't win. Well, maybe you could lose a little more. It's just like, that's not, you know, like you get to that point in competing where you're like, it is not, it's not the weight. 
it's not. No, it's <laughs> not. And I just like, I remember, okay, like I, I know we're, this is a podcast, but I'm going to show you this picture like this. I've never felt mm-hmm. more like bomb about myself in this picture right here. And I was still being told how much more I had to like firm up and tone up because this was a year I was first turner up. And they're like, well, that's okay. why you didn't win. And I was like, I look amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> like I would kill to look like this again. But I also remember seeing this picture the day after it was taken. And I was like, I'm disgusting. I'm so fat. I'm so obese. I can't like, this is absolutely why I didn't win. And now I look at this picture, I'm like, I would give my right pinky to look like this again. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's so funny how cruel we are to ourselves mm-hmm. in that moment. And then when we look back with like kinder eyes, it's like, I would kill to look like her. And then, I, and then you get retroactively mad because you're like, why didn't you appreciate what you looked like back then? Like, why were you always in this cycle of just like constantly hating yourself? <laughs> like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So... Uh, those are your first three years of competing. Yeah. And then as you got older, or maybe even like, let's fast forward to like winning Mr. County and like that process of like getting there those last couple of years. Like what was competing like for you then in regards to your body? Like, cause you, I mean, you had an eating disorder. Were you seeking help with it at that time? Like where was it? How did you get to, you know, competing for Mr. County and winning and then your journey after that? Yeah. So no, because like I said, I had no idea that I even mm-hmm. had one. And the hard part too was like, and when I say that, I've talked this so much through with like my mom and some of my close friends. My mom was like, it was so obvious you had an eating disorder. We were trying to like help you out of it. And you just like, didn't want to hear it. You weren't going to mm-hmm. listen to it. Like I remember my brother, one of those first years I was competing, he and I took a trip together and because we were a lot closer back then. And he would mask it with humor, but it was like, he used to have, and I didn't actually overly realize this because he always said in this joking tone, he used to have his girlfriend follow me to the bathroom because he thought I was absolutely bulimic. Wow. And I was like, no, I was like, that's what I was like, I just drink a lot of water. (laughs) Like, what are you talking about? Uh, And I just, I really had to just go to the bathroom a lot, but I, I never once like made myself throw up for it. And that's, but, and so, but that was what my very, very narrow view of eating disorders was. I was mm-hmm. like, well, I'm not making myself throw up. So I'm fine. You know what I mean? Cause I didn't mm-hmm. know that a term like exercise bulimia was. A or thing. even and, so, some of what you're describing to me sounds a little bit like orthorexia as well. Like mm-hmm. this idea of just wanting to eat so clean and only putting certain foods into your body. And those are the only like good foods for you. Um, so it oh. sounds like you just had this like mix of this eating disorder melting pot. (laughs) Probably, honestly. And it's so, because again, I never got help or even noticed that it was a problem back then. And Mm -hmm. I remember I used to think, I really remember this. I remember thinking that certain foods were good and truly that other certain foods were evil, like things with high calorie contents. And Mm -hmm. one of them I remember, and let me phrase, so like college campuses, right? No one eats well on a college campus. College campuses are just like a breeding ground of just garbage. Like here's some free pizza. Here's a free sub. Here's some free chips. Like, please come to this meeting. Uh, No, people don't eat well at college. And I remember like there was a spot at UWO where um like in our in our nicer cafeteria that there was like this one section of like pasta bowls right and I I would shudder if I walked past it I was and I would like how can people eat something like that Mm -hmm. and then I would sit at a big table with people eating their lunches and they would have like pizza or tacos or the pasta bowl or something and I was never judgmental of those people because I loved those people but I was sat there and I was like how can you eat that I was like, I could never eat that. How can you eat that? Mm -hmm. The other one was, um, I actually refuse, this is so funny knowing me now, I refused to drink coffee back then because I could never, I couldn't drink like black coffee, right? And That just shocked me to my core. That's not, that's the last thing I would have expected you to say. Susan is the coffee queen, guys. Like, (laughs) Well, here's why though, because I didn't have the acquired taste for like black coffee back then. Is the only thing I would drink were like super sugary, like a mocha. Okay. Which, and then when I learned that that had like 400 calories in it, I was like, okay, then I will never drink coffee again. Mm-hmm. So then when I watch other people at the like Starbucks stands ordering like mochas and frappes and like whatever, I would sit mm-hmm. there and I'm like, how can you do that? I'm like, that's so, and I would, and I would get really judgmental of, and it wasn't such so other people, but I would think about if I ordered that, then how terrible I would feel about my life. And then I remember one time I actually like ordered a mocha and I like went to like a three hour lecture and I was like, this is amazing. Like yeah. I'm just like jazzed up. 
<laughs> and it, yeah, it was just, and that was the same with that possible too. It was like the first time I ate one was after Miss Oshkosh. And I remember I was like so happy and I almost like started crying. I was like, this is why people eat this. It yeah. like, not spinach. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, <laughs> yes. I totally get all of those things. <laughs> Yeah. And so what happened was, so again, this abusive relationship in Miss America all happened synonymously. So what happened was, that was my first three years competing. So now we're in 2015. And my abusive relationship comes to a head in this year. Mm -hmm. Um, It was very bad. I don't think, I'm not super public about this. um, So I don't even know if you know this story. So in this year... Oh God, my life was just like a wreck. I couldn't go like a day, even half a day without like crying. Um, my emotions, like the amount of abuse that had happened and just how terrible this relationship was, was at a peak, right? And because now he'd come to college with me. So I'm like seeing him like every day and it's just getting worse and worse and worse to the point where, so, Ms., so that year I was competing for Miss Oshkosh, which was in March. So right before all of this, um, we finally break up and it does not go well. Okay. <laughs> to say the least. Um, to the point that the week of the Miss Oshkosh competition that year, I actually attempted suicide. And the amount of people, so that was like the week before, and the amount of people that had begged me, like literally did nothing but beg me to just not go through with the show, to not compete. They were like, you need rest. You need to stop. You need to like deal with everything that just happened. And I was like, no, because like, you know, it's the week before and Miss Oshkosh is such a huge production. Like, you know, the posters Mm -hmm. and the paper and all these things. I was like, it would raise so many more eyebrows to drop out than to stay in. Like if it was like an open and no one knew about it, I probably would have been okay with it, but it was like such a big thing. And, but, uh, and so leading up to this also too, I I forgot this. So this is also the first time I start uh, gaining a little bit of weight. And I would say Mm -hmm. probably from my like more anorexic spot in life, like 20 pounds in like a year. Um, But it was like a necessary 20 pounds Mm -hmm. off of like, like you could just see my rib cage. Like it was a good 20 pounds and the amount of cruelty that he had on me when I was doing that. But it was like, I also had moved into my sorority house at this point. I had like eight roommates and they were all like fast food Queens Mm -hmm. and like ordering pizza and like doing everything. And they kept inviting me to go out with them. And for a long time I was like, no, I shouldn't. And then all of a sudden I started going because it was like, otherwise I wasn't having any friend time, (laughs) you know, like everyone else would go and I would sit with myself with like my bag of broccoli and carrots and it was Mm -hmm. really annoying. And so I started, we just wanted to become like part of the friend group, which meant going out to eat with them, which was really hard because they all were like addicted to like Taco Bell and like McDonald's and pizza and whatever. Um, Even though I was trying really hard and I was still exercising and eating all my normal stuff, like now this was being incorporated. And I'll never forget like how cruel he was when I first started gaining my first couple of pounds. Um, he very much told me that I was, um, like in a sexual manner, like how disgusting I was and he couldn't actually even like look at me and look at my body because he was so like disgusted by me. And I was like, confidence here is just like rolling off the charts. I love it. (laughs) Um, and so you, you saw all these things were, were happening together and the more like my depression was growing out of this, like it was just harder to move in a day. It was hard to get out of bed. It was harder to go to the gym and it was hard to stay motivated at the gym. Like I was going, but like the amount of like depression I was just like holding on to was like, I could very phys- like not really physically move. Mm-hmm. And so, so please keep in mind this traumatic breakup had happened. This suicide attempt had happened this whole week. We get to Friday. We get to the rehearsal of Miss Oshkosh and I don't feel confident. I don't even feel alive. Like I was such a zombie just going through the Mm -hmm. motions. And I got that feedback a lot from people. They're like, you just look like you're They're like, it was dead in your eyes. Like you were just like, you showed up, but you weren't there. Yeah. And a woman came up to me at a dress for her at intermission Um, And ironically, it was the same woman who told me to like, keep going back in 2012. 
had come up to me and I was so excited to see her because we had had like this great relationship. And so I ran up to her and I gave her a hug and I was like, Hey, how's it going? You know what you doing? She looked at me, no, hi, no, hello, nothing. She looked at me and did one of those like full body scans with her eyes and went, well, you've gained a lot of weight. And I was like, <gasps> your face. Like, that's what I did. So I, we're also, we're in the dressing room with everyone. Like, cause that was like our dinner break. Right. So oh like in God. front of every single, like every other competitor, the boards, the volunteers, everyone was in this dressing room. And she just like, says that comment to me very loudly. And I was like, uh, and I was so shocked. And I was like, um, and I didn't even know what to say. I'm pretty sure I just like stammered. And she was like, I hope you know that you're not going to win tomorrow because of how much weight that you've gained. And please keep in mind, I've gained like 20 pounds at this point from an anorexic spot. And I just remember sitting there and thinking, I was like, I know what I look like because that's all I could manage to get out and say to her. And she was like, well, I mean, you just, you got to, you know, I don't know what you did. You started like sitting on your couch, like eating Cheetos. I don't know what you did to your own body, but you know, she's like, you've gained too much weight and you're not going to win tomorrow. And like, you have to know that that's fully your fault. And when you don't win, that's why. And you could have prevented this if you didn't let yourself go, but like berates me in front of the entire class of competitors on dress rehearsal night and I know she doesn't know everything that happened that week you know but like for me I was like already like a shell of a person I was like just stab me with a knife 17 times why don't you like what um long story short (laughs) the board was so upset at her actions she actually was very uninvited to come to Miss Oshkosh and they actually removed her from their volunteer board wow. as well of that incident. so I, I give all the props to Miss Oshkosh I love them as an organization but this is just like what had happened at that day um and fun fact I did not win my best friend in the world did and I think that was absolutely how that was always supposed to work out oh so that was 2015 <laughs> that was Mackenzie yeah okay okay <laughs> yeah I am still like I have like goosebumps and I'm just like Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm staring at you with like this blank stare. I'm like, I was like, please don't stop talking because I have no words to like come back from what you just said. But like, well, also I'm sure that you probably didn't know that whole story. No, I knew none of that. Yeah. I, and I'm just thinking, despite everything that happened in that week alone, like I'm thinking somebody with an eating disorder, undiagnosed or diagnosed, like you were probably already thinking some of those things and like oh, yeah. all of those things that she said to you, like, I know I've thought them. It's like, oh, I've gained too much weight and I'm not going to win. And it is my own fault. I could have done X, Y, and Z and I will not, you know, and it's just like, I can't imagine hearing somebody else say all of those things that you probably have already said to yourself, like, mm-hmm. There and are no words from someone that I used to respect. Yes. And you like looked up to and she encouraged yeah, you to be in this program. Yeah. It wasn't like a stranger on the street was screaming at me. And I was like, I don't even know you. You know what I mean? Like this right. was a woman respected that I looked up to that like used to encourage me. And just again, in front of the entire crowd on like literally the worst week of my life, like to this day, like that is the worst week of my life that I've ever enjoyed. Yeah. And just like berated me for how I look. And yeah, so all the evil thoughts you ever think about yourself were now verbalized out of another human being's mouth. And even her other thing about like, you know, stop sitting on the couch eating Cheetos. I was like, I hate Cheetos. I've never even eaten a Cheeto since I was like five. I was like, get off my back. I was like, yeah. Also saying, I was like, you don't know. And I, I tried to say this to her. I was like, you don't know what I'm eating. You don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Because it's not Cheetos. It's just, and that was the hard part, I think, for a lot of people to understand was that I didn't just all of a sudden decide to fill my body with garbage and stop moving. I just was kind of becoming a slightly normal person, but everyone had met me in peak eating disorder. Mm -hmm. Everyone met me at my peak fitness when I did so much destruction of my own body, but that, so they thought that was normal because that's how I showed up. So when I started becoming normal for me, they were like, oh, well you look like a fat pig. Like what's happening right now? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. I'm just like, I don't even, I'm just like stammering trying. I'm like, okay, I need to ask her another question, but I can't no, emotionally get over. <laughs> so I'll do, so I'll keep oh, going. Please. I'm so, <laughs> like, it's 2015. Um, yes. So then the next, so then 2016. So what happens for like next is just, again, I start becoming a slightly more normal person. I start mm-hmm. living a more again, for me, like a normal life where it's like, I was still going to the gym. Like 
two, three, even like four times a week, I was still eating like relatively pretty healthy. Um, I was doing all these things, but I just like, I wasn't torturing myself anymore. And my body was looking like what a normal person's, I think, really was like, you know, and I started now and yeah, I started becoming like a curvier person and whatever, because then at that point too, I think once you really get out of that, I don't want to go back to like torching myself, but it was hard to get back into, you know what I mean? Like a full, like a crazy seven day a week workout regimen and back to like, I still love those spinach. Sal- I still love a good spinach salad. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. So tasty. So like, I, I still, I still actually eat quite very healthy. I love moving my body. It all just looks a lot different now. And now I'm also like 26, like my metabolism mm-hmm. is starting to slow, but also I've stopped beating myself up as much where it's like, if you want to go to half price apps with all of your sorority sisters and all of your friends and you want to have some spinach dip, like my God, like, can you just have some spinach dip with your friends at midnight? Mm-hmm. Because this is college, like, you know, and stop like holding yourself back from all these other things for that. Now, hardcore pageant people are going to say, well, if you really wanted to win, you would have sacrificed like all of your friend time and all of your whatever. No. If you wanted to win. I used to hear that in podcasts from people. They're like, well, what? do you care? All your-? There was a guy I was listening to and he's like, well, do you care what all your other friends are doing? Your other friends want to become Miss America. So if you want to become Miss America, you got to step your game up harder. And I was like an alienate everyone I've ever tried to have a social life with. So it was this weird balance that was happening. And I was becoming a curvier person. And again, I think what was hard for Miss Wisconsin people was that, again, they all met me at 110 pounds mm-hmm. and as tiny as can be, and that you could see my rib cage, like, and patches of my own skull, you know what I mean? Like, that's how they met me. So this was a very stark, weird difference for them. But I was like, but for me, I was like, well, I used to torture the hell out of myself. And now I feel kind of normal and kind of happy, but you're making me feel like a par- um, what do I want to say? I was gonna say a piranha. That's not what I meant. Um, you're making me just feel like a monster mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, for like trying to enjoy a little bit of my life, but also an understanding. And I think the hard part is like, everyone always knew this. And I heard this a lot. They're like, you would be an incredible Miss Wisconsin. Like I knew I would do the job mm-hmm. at Miss Wisconsin better than like ever had before. But it was like, but, you know, you just, you don't have the look anymore. Mm -hmm. But it was funny was that's also when I started winning. So it was like, so what area are we going for? (laughs) And I do remember, so like I said earlier, Susan and I had competed for Miss Green Bay area. That would have been 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then. Before I won Miss Dorothy. Yes. Yeah. So then it was very shortly before Susan went on to win her next local. And I remember talking to her about like being, you know, in competition and being curvier and all of this stuff. And then it was like, she, you were first runner up to Miss Green Bay area that year, right? Second. Okay. I remember you were in the top three Mm -hmm. and then it was like, it was just so ironic because we had had the discussion of eating disorders and body image and all that stuff. And like, not winning because at that time you and I, you and I both went on to win different locals, but like, yeah. I just remember like watching you places second runner up and being like, damn, like <laughs> we were just talking about how like, we don't, we don't win because we look like this. And then that yeah. next week she won Miss Door County. And yeah. I just remember like, God, she looks so, oh my God, she looks so beautiful. And I was watching on, like, uh, Facebook Live, and I remember I was in my dorm room. My three roommates probably still remember me shrieking and being like, I know you don't know her, but we were just talking about how she never (laughs) fucking wins. And she just won us. Yes. Well, two funny things on that. So I remember having a moment with you um, on dress rehearsal night, right? Okay. So it was a big debate. I had ordered two black swimsuits that year. Mm -hmm. One was a one piece black swimsuit. And I have that swimsuit to this day. I still actually now actively enjoy wearing a swimsuit because it's very like Marilyn Monroe. The one piece. The one piece that I yes that year. I feel like I remember this. I think I think that you do. If you saw a picture, you would. It's very Marilyn Monroe esque. It really looks like that white bathing suit that's like a famous picture of her, but black. Okay. I I literally still wear it today. I love it. And then I had ordered this really nice um, high waisted swimsuit. So the first Mm -hmm. time I'd ever done this, 
Because so the other thing she's like, my belly is like my problem area. Like that's just where I gain weight like first. And so the high waisted was important to me, but it was the first time I was doing either of those things. Um, and then I had like a really nice top that like framed my tatas like very nicely because something that we were blessed with. Uh-huh. And so I really, I liked that one more and I felt better in that one, but everyone was telling me to wear the one piece. And I was like, but I was like, I know it's maybe not great, but I like this one more. I feel, I still feel like a little Miss America E, just like the act of wearing the two piece. And everyone mm-hmm. was like, you know, though, I just, I really think that you should wear the one piece. Now, here's the thing, because I'm not trying to like tell people that was bad advice. It was great advice. Because again, I still like that swimsuit to yeah. this day. I still like, I know I looked good in it. I like the style of swimsuit. And I had a very sick moment. And I said this to you when we were in our swimsuits backstage and I looked at you because I knew you were going to be the only person who like could understand me on this was, I know I didn't look like it, but wearing the one piece was so defeating. And I said this, I was like, I feel like the fat kid at camp. I do remember that. Mm -hmm. And you were trying to be really nice about it. You're like, no, you don't look that way. And I was like, I I know you may not look that way, but that's how I feel. And Mm -hmm. that emotion was going to come through on my face, whether I looked good or not in it mentally, that was such a defeating moment for me. Mm -hmm. And I was upset by that. And now the other thing too was, so I was second runner up. Uh, The next morning I went back home to my parents in Door County because I was like closer. And I remember the next morning someone posted like a million photos um, from the night before. And like she sat in that awful like front row, like sky. You know what I mean? I already know. I've seen seen all those those upshots, which is like the grossest thing ever. I love that Tara Pizer does for Miss Madison. Now she has the judges sit like further back Mm -hmm. in the audience so that not everyone is just staring at this like ugly upshot of you. Because I don't care who you are. That's not a cute angle. No. No matter what. No, no matter what you're wearing, either, like, yeah, swimsuit or, or evening gown or whatever. It's not cute. It's never it's been cute. cute. You're just staring up at someone. It's uh-huh. so I hate it. And, like, they don't do that at Miss America for a reason. No, like, no. raise them up so that you're not gross looking. And, anyway, I digress. Um, and I, I am not kidding you. This is not cute. I saw these pictures, because, like, you get the notification, you know, you're tagged. And I look at these pictures, and I'm not kidding. I start screaming. And I'm not talking like a cute scream. I mean, like, an act. and I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I broke down to the floor in my kitchen because that's just where I was standing at the time. And I like ended up, <laughs> I ended up on the floor of my mother's bedroom having like an exorcism level cry because I hated myself so much looking at these pictures. Mm-hmm. Like it was the ugliest, like gut wrenching cry. And that was finally the moment. Cause people have been begging me for so long to like freaking quit. <laughs> and they're like, just give up, please. Like, dear God, just stop it. And that's finally when I was like, fine, that's it. People have been begging me to quit for forever. This is why I can't even stomach looking at myself. I hate myself so much. I'm done. I'm out. And I looked at my mom and I was like, pull me out of everything. I can't do it. Cause I was signed up for Mr. County, Miss Ashford, yeah. like every local. I was like, get me out of all of them. I'm so done. I can't do this anymore. And it was just like, I can't put myself through this anymore. I can't put myself through this like emotional, just like ugly just, I can't just gut wrench and cry one more time. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't. And then a it. week later. Well, so here's why though. Because okay. my mom was like, my mom's on board. She was like, thank God. She's like, get out. I'm. So, she's oh, like, wow. I'm sick of you looking so upset. She's like, the amount that you've tortured yourself is unreal. She's like, I, I'm ready for you to stop beating yourself up about this. Um, and she was like, but here's the thing. She's like, Miss Dork County is next week. She was like, it only has four people competing, which is the minimum you need for a pageant. And she was like, if you pull out, you're going to ruin the whole show. Because if you pull out, they can't have a show at all anymore. And Mm -hmm. she's like, I will let you quit everything. You don't even have to like going on stage. You don't have to like doing any of your things. She's like, you just have to go there so that they can at least have the show. She's like, you can't ruin this for everybody else. And I was like, fine. So she literally was like, I will let you quit everything else if you don't win Miss Door County. She's like, but you have to go to that one because otherwise you, you can't ruin it for everyone. And then she won. I have and that's half goosebumps. the reason why, like, my crowning video is so dramatic. Mm-hmm. Because I was so done. I was so fed up. That was 
going to be my last show out of the sole fact that I couldn't torture myself anymore. And, but also too, that was like six years in the making. It was Mm -hmm. years and 17 shows that I had to be the runner up, that I had to slap that smile on my face and not look devastated and heartbroken for myself. Even when I was happy for the other girl, like you're Mm -hmm. so devastated for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm not kidding. I blacked out when I actually won Mr. County. I remember my name got called and I saw a spotlight and then nothing. <laughs> she, you, have to send, you have to send it to me because I, I need to put, okay. <laughs> ah, yay. I, like, that's going um, up on, on Instagram for sure. I t- like truly and honestly, I, because I, 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 so I can't express this enough how much I didn't think that this was going to happen. Because again, mm-hmm. I just, I was ready to be done. Yeah, I and I think, anymore. I think that's so funny how the world works because I feel like anyone that has heard me talk about my journey with the title that I have now, I signed up, like, prior to this year, like, Miss Green Bay area, I'm, like, DMing them, like, when, when can I sign up? I am here. I, like... I'm doing this. And like the two years, so yeah, two years ago, I like did all of the recruiting. I was like finding girls from St. Norbert. I was like, we only have two. And then it will like me and two others. So we need one more to like have a pageant. I was like, just do it. Like I will freaking pay you. And she just like, she came on and did it. Um, And then like somebody else won. So that was two years ago. So the year before I win and I was like, I'm so, I was like, I'm done giving to this program. I'm done torturing myself and like trying to look a certain way and do all this stuff to win this local. And then I signed up late because my boyfriend was like, you're really not going to do it. He was like, really? After all these years and I've heard you talk about it and this and that, he was like, really? You're just going to give up. You're a quitter now. And I was like in the car with him. I remember I turned and looked at him. I was like, that is so rude. (laughs) (laughs) So mean. It was like, we were on the way to your event in Beloit when I was Miss Madison in like October. Oh yeah. That, um, the, uh, the The, bowling bowling one. And Mm -hmm. I was talking to him about like who he was going to meet in my pageant journey. Cause we had never really, he had never seen me in that light. Mm -hmm. And I remember just feeling like, yeah, I'm kind of glad you're getting to come to this because you haven't seen me do anything as like Miss whomever. And I don't think I'm going to do this ever again. And he was like, oh, really? Okay, well, fine. Quitter. Okay. Uh huh. Literally, he looked me dead in the eyes, and he's like, "Oh, so you just quit now? That's what we do?" And I was like, "Okay." So then it was like I went to your event. I I did like one other thing in Blight. We drove back and I signed up, but it was late, much later than like mm-hmm. when they like the cutoff to be. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like so glad that they let me do it and like all this stuff. Yeah. But and then I won, and it, he literally he has said it to me multiple times in quarantine. He said it to me the night that I won. He was like. And you thought you weren't good enough. You thought you weren't pretty enough. You thought you weren't skinny enough, like this and that. He was like, hmm. he was like, and he, he I'm knows me you. well enough to know that I would have been sitting in the audience that like this year, just being like, Crying. I could have done it. I could have yeah. like, he yeah. knew he was like, you know what? I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> yep. And I just, I think it's so funny how the world works. And like, we think that we're done and we think that, you know, mm-hmm. it's not going to happen because it has in all these other times. And like, I feel like yeah. the world just knows what you need yeah. and gives it to you when you, when you need it and when you're ready for it. But going back to what you said about like your, your body journey and then coming out of this hell week, coming out of people saying those negative things to you and then winning from that point on, I mean, what was your, did, were you confident throughout your time competing at Miss Wisconsin and like, no. Okay. Oh, so no. then let's, let, <laughs> that's honestly, I figure that was the answer. Cause no one's ever just like, I want a local and I like, no, I want a local and now I'm perfect. And I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> my, my work is done. Yeah. No. Um, because I knew, especially that first year as Mr. County, like I knew, like I finally had jumped that hurdle. Right. Mm-hmm. But I knew that my work was also only starting because I knew I had every disadvantage coming at me at Miss Wisconsin. I knew that I was going to be one of the heaviest people at Miss Wisconsin. I knew also that at the time for Mr. County, like Mr. County had never made top 11 ever in like our whole history of Mr. County. I know the people, I love Mr. County and we are amazing local. We give so many scholarships, mm-hmm. but at the Miss Wisconsin level, people usually think that we're kind of a joke, which has always been something I've wanted to change, mm-hmm. um, which is out of the sole fact that like, it's a, it's a small hometown closed pageant, but we have no college. 
And so, it re- you know, we don't have a college crowd oh, to try and get, like, recruit from, like, you've got UWGB and St. Mm-hmm. Norbert and WTC. Like, you've got all these, like, other places mm-hmm. you can try and recruit. You, uh, Miss Oshkosh pulls everyone from UW Oshkosh. Like, we don't have that. So, it's like, you get the high school girls. So, it's usually a high school senior that's like, what, what, huh? Mm-hmm. What am I doing here? And so, I, I knew I had, I actually knew I had to work 10 times harder than everyone else because I was kind of coming up as the underdog. Mm-hmm. Um, so I worked so hard. I want to say I lost a little over 20 pounds going to Miss Wisconsin that year. So I, I mean, I worked my mm-hmm. booty off. Um, like I talked to Tara Pizer, who had just, who now I live with, which I think is so funny. Um, and because that was the first year she was done competing. So she sent me like all of her like insanity tapes. Like, and mm-hmm. I had an apartment to myself where I was on the first floor. So I had no qualms about like doing my Irish dancing in my apartment and I had like awesome. but it was like only the garage was underneath me so I wasn't upsetting anyone so I was like doing insanity I was doing all these things I was running my talent um I was working 10 times harder and I felt really good when I got to Miss Wisconsin so obviously I was disappointed when I didn't make top 11 uh the next year was definitely heightened because I looked even better that year like so when I was Miss Badgerland that was definitely like the best I had looked when I showed up to Miss Wisconsin um and we still didn't make top 10 (laughs) and then when we came back from Miss South Central it was so funny because like that obviously like that year was the first year I knew I wasn't gonna have to do swimsuit at state but I was still working as hard as ever that was like I loved every single piece of my wardrobe that I had that year I felt confident obviously it was also kind of a mind fuck when I like won a prelim and then came back down and still didn't make mm-hmm. it ten. Um, but no, I mean, no, I think every year I always have the mentality that I have to work 10 times harder than everyone else because I'm coming in as the underdog. Like I might be well liked and people might be supporting me. I wasn't like enough, but I'm still the underdog. You know what I mean? And did you feel that way because of how you looked? Because I yeah. think, I think on paper, and I feel like you know this about yourself, like you are a top contender when it comes to your social impact initiative and your passion and your drive at you did 17 locals before you won like mm-hmm. oh, like well, no one's gonna say that you're not hardworking and determined like right well and I will say this this was a weird technique I made up and I actually would encourage anyone to do this so if you haven't been paying attention to me start now listen this up. is what I did when I was Miss Badgerland and I was getting ready for Miss Wisconsin 2018 I was so, like, crippled by comparison fatigue. It was unreal. Um, I had never worked harder uh, in, like, all the aspects because that was the first year I moved to Madison. I got my own apartment. I got my first big girl job. I was still working my nonprofit. I was just admitted into grad school, and now I'm also working for Miss Wisconsin. I got like four hours of sleep like every single night, but I was just bawling because I was like, well, we got work to do. We, we've got things. I, I used to do mock interviews until 2 a.m., you know what I mean? Like, because that person was in California, so she was mm-hmm. up, so it was like, that's, and then I would get up at six for work, and it was just ridiculous. Oh. Um, never worked harder, but I was still so, like, just plagued by comparison to T, mm-hmm. because it's so easy to look at all the other girls and just go, well, she has a better body, she's a fantastic singer, she has a better interview than me, you know, she, you know, like, it's so easy. Mm-hmm. So what I started doing was, I went to Target, and I bought a stack of color-coded Post-it notes, Okay. I know I what this out. is. I know you know what this is. I think I made you do this at one yes, point. Yes, you did. Um, so I had, so again, I moved into my first big girl apartment and obviously I did not have furniture to fill it yet. So I had this blank wall in my bedroom and I took a post-it note and I made them all different themes. So it was like, I can't remember what the categories were, but it was like one category was my goals as Miss Wisconsin. One category was my goals at Miss America one category and then another one and the most important one was all the reasons why judges should pick me Mm -hmm. which was i was going to grad school in one of the top 10 universities in the country i did have a very serious platform and i did more work than everybody else like i had the heart i had the drive i had all these plans as miss wisconsin to grow the scholarship fund 
to have more appearances, to get more sponsors, to recruit. I had a whole recruiting plan for the entire next year to get locals more up, um, get more locals involved and then get more girls there. I had everything. Mm -hmm. And I made a post-it note wall on my bedroom of all the reasons why I was awesome and why someone should like why those judges should pick me as Miss Wisconsin and because I put it in my bedroom I now had to look at it every single day that I woke up and every single day when I went to sleep mm -hmm. I was looking at this wall of all these reasons that I was great <laughs> and that sounds weird I know that and it, it sounds conceited when you're like no I'm doing this because I'm like cripplingly like hate myself <laughs> you know and it looked crazy. Like, I, I tried so hard. Like, if people ever came over to my apartment, I wouldn't, like, let them in my bedroom. Because I was like, please don't see this wall of, like, compliments to myself. Like, please stop. Like, if you added red string, it looked like a serial killer's room. Like, it was not cute. I've done um, it, so I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. My roommates are like, oh, okay. They're like, what she's lost. You? She's lost it. <laughs> she's yeah, going, but it was like, going crazy. But it was so helpful because the thing is, and I'm going to get on a different tangent of, I, I'm a, I'm not really like a religious person, but I am mm -hmm. definitely like a spiritual person. And I believe in, you know, universal intelligence, talking to whatever. And there's so much power in writing these things down and mm -hmm. having, because you're sending those vibrations out to the universe. You're manifesting it. You're speaking these things into existence. So the more that I wrote down these things, like, yeah, I'm a badass and I would be an amazing Miss Wisconsin for all these reasons. Like, of course you should pick me. Um, and then once you write it down, it's easier to start doing that to yourself because, mm -hmm. and that also isn't very important. Nowhere in there did I ever cut anyone else down. I was like, I'm better dancer than her. It was just right. all these reasons why I, as a person was great mm -hmm. and very worthy of this job. It had nothing to do yes. with you know, how I was a dancer versus her, how I interviewed different than her, how, whatever. It just was me trying to feel myself up so that I had like an unshakable confidence when I got mm -hmm. there. So still wasn't perfect. Still was like, oh, oh no. I was like, I still feel like a fat kid at camp a lot of times. But I have always felt like that at Miss Wisconsin and I feel like I always will. It's just like, you know what's hard about that though? And cause then I started doing this because in that moment, you feel like the fat kid at camp. But here's the mm -hmm. thing. I look at group pictures of us at Miss Wisconsin, whether it's like a rehearsal or like that shot, you know, when we're all standing in our evening gowns up there. And I'm like, what the fuck? I don't look any different mm -hmm. than any of the other. You know what I mean? Like if I took a tape measure and like measure like my waist versus her waist in this picture, I'm sure it wouldn't be any different. I've never done that because I don't want to be a fallen sociopath, but you know what I mean? It's not like I'm mm -hmm. looking at that picture and I'm like, wow, I was like, I look like a blimp in this picture. I'm like, I actually look pretty well blended in mm -hmm. everybody else. So it was like, why did you hate yourself so much in the moment and think you were like the size of a school bus uh -huh. on this stage when you look at this picture and you're like, oh, that's actually not the truth. I had that moment for the first time this year after Miss Wisconsin, like as Miss Madison coming home and seeing pictures. Cause I remember like, I felt confident in my wardrobe and in my prep and everything like leading up to Miss Wisconsin. And then I got there and for whatever reason I was like, Oh my God. And like, I feel like anyone that competed with me that year, I am not in like cry in public, like lose my mind kind of person. And I did that so many times that year because it was like, I just felt like just everything I had done, I was like, it just wasn't enough. I'm not enough. I'm not this enough. And I did yep. hyper, I put that, like, I feel like people with eating disorders do, like, I put that into mm -hmm. my appearance. Um, and these feelings of inadequacy yep. in other ways, like, I put it on myself and my appearance. And I remember I saw a picture of myself with the Mr. County from last year. And I was sitting next to her and I, like, looked at myself. I was like, I looked so good in that gown and I look so happy. And I was like, I'm standing next to someone that is also equally beautiful and equally happy. I was just like, I spent that whole week like livid. Yeah. And thinking that you didn't. And then you see a picture yes. and you're like, oh, I was like, well, like this picture from like, my oh my God, pre I love that one. And I just, I love it. Cause you can tell my face was like, so genuinely she like, showed me a photo of her winning a preliminary award at miss wisconsin it's a stunning oh, photo she looks gorgeous but i look at it because i'm standing next to tia and elise and mm -hmm. i'm like i do not look that different mm -hmm. like i don't look like the blimp that i felt like in this picture no so one's looking I, at that picture and is like and is like wow. why did why is susan even there like yeah, no yeah, one is thinking that gross <laughs> yeah. 
but it's yeah so it's it, it's such a weird because i've also looked at pictures and i'm like wow of course that's why you didn't win like you mammoth beast you know mm-hmm. what i mean like i've looked but then i can also look back at pictures and be like why were you so hard on yourself mm-hmm. like you look you know what i mean it's just like the mental game that goes on in there is just the cruelest thing in the mm-hmm. entire world So the next thing that I want to ask you about, because as someone that is, I don't know, I haven't told this to too many people, but I think most people have kind of figured it out. This will be my last year in the Miss America organization. I'm going to be peacing out after my, my years as Miss Green Bay area are done. Um, and I'm, so I'm curious as to how your body image and how, how you see yourself and how you conduct yourself has changed post competing in Miss America. Cause I know you're still involved, but like have you changed the way that you see yourself since being done in that organization? Yeah. And a lot, some in ways that I anticipated and some in ways that I did not anticipate. So I have been out technically, I've been out for like eight months, but I counted as a year. Cause that's when I, you know, competed for Miss Wisconsin last time. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so hard. Cause I definitely have like gained a few pounds Um, because I'm not in competition mode anymore. But at the same time, I still struggle all the time finding like a true equilibrium. Mm -hmm. And what's so weird, I know we'll talk about this later. I found the weirdest like cycle and I don't even like it. So I don't know why I'm in it of uh, (laughs) when I was like dating people in a non-pandemic world, it kept Mm -hmm. being a lot of like personal trainers of dudes. And I'm like, why, why is this like happening right now? But one of them I would talk about with a lot. And I'm like, I struggle with this equilibrium because I spent the last eight years in this idea of we're in pageant prep and we only eat chicken and spinach and now we're not in pageant prep and I can relax. Like I, I looked at it as like two extremes, like you're prepping Mm -hmm. or you're relaxing. And I was like, so now that I'm a real person, I was like, how do I just be a real person? How do I hang out in the middle? I don't know. And I kept saying to him, I was like, I feel like I need to just have a goal that I'm working towards. Uh, You know, like I hate running. I'm not a good runner. I hate running. I learned that I have ath- ath- athletic induced asthma or whatever. Like my lungs physically don't mm-hmm. like running, but I was like, I think I still need to sign up for a half marathon. Cause I just need something to work towards. Like I just need like Ugh. a date and a goal to work towards. And he was like, why do you need a goal for anything? He's like, why can't just living healthy be the goal? And I was like, cause I don't know what that looks like, dude. I don't know. I, I still to this day, I don't know. I try mm-hmm. really hard, but I don't know. And so I'm, I'm still really struggling figuring out like Because I still, like, I go for super long walks. I have, like, videos. I've got weights. I've got bands. I've got all these things, like, in my room. Um, After Miss Wisconsin is when I got really into cycling and spin classes. I, You know, like, I'm finding exercises that I enjoy. And I still eat pretty healthy, but I don't count calories anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, how do I live in this, like, symbiosis? And number two, so it's, like, it's weird. Um, Number two, I've learned how to do things, like, um... Go live with my natural hair and go out so in public cute. without makeup on, which is something I did not do for like mm-hmm. 10 years. I ref- I'm i still working on that. Even if I was like going to the gas station, I was like, absolutely not. Will I leave this house without at least some mascara on? Because also, because I am a natural blonde, so my eyelashes are too. So when I don't wear mascara, it's like, does she have jaundice? Is she ill? <laughs> like, because everything about like the rest of my face is so blonde <laughs> that I get so like, self-conscious about it. So I'm trying to get better at those things and I've done pretty well. And then the last thing is, and this is something I've, I've dove into really hard with my therapist was a thought that I've had that has been instilled in in me with Miss America that I'm trying to counteract as I keep working hard for now my career goals and the rest of my life. A lot of that I now feel like I'm on camera and like doing videos more now to try and promote myself as Mm -hmm. a podcaster, as a consultant, as a speaker, as all these things. So I can get booked for these jobs. So I can do this. And so I still really associate being thin with being successful and achieving my goal. Mm -hmm. Because throughout Miss America, that was really my thought process was, well, I'm never going to achieve this goal if I'm not at this weight. Mm-hmm. Hence, now we have a goal weight <laughs> because now they're tied together. And I'm still trying to figure out how to untie those things from my brain so that mm-hmm. I don't think, well, like, well, when I show up on this stage to speak, 
I have to look like this and I have to be this way. And it's so, and when I say it out loud, I know it's dumb. It's like, I have to be this way so that people take me more seriously on stage. Mm -hmm. I know that that sounds really. I totally, I totally get that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm still really working on untying that. Like I remember I, so I don't think you know this (laughs) last year. No, a few months ago, March, February, whatever. Okay. Um, I was a finalist um, to give a TED talk at Northwestern. And I, uh, okay. I know. <laughs> I did not my, know that. I've learned so much about you today. Oh, thank you. I, one of my huge goals in my life is to give a TED talk. Like I've got like the topic. I'm so ready for it. I want it so bad. Um, especially like with my speaking career, all these things. Yeah. And so I, I was in the finalist to do it at Northwestern. And and so when I got the first thing where I like made like the first cut and then we were like talking about like, you know, exactly what the speech is going to be. And also because hilarious, uh, the theme for this year was supposed to be hindsight is 2020. That did not age well. Nope. <laughs> and so, but then, you know, COVID happened, the event got canceled. Uh-huh. So I never knew where I like landed in that lineup. But I remember thinking, I was like, okay, I'm a finalist. This is really happening. And I had, I had a list to get me from February to May. And I was like, this is the outfit that I see myself doing in. And this is how I'm going to like have my hair. And this is how many pounds I need to lose because a Ted talks are recorded. You know, it's a full body thing mm-hmm. if you like on the red dot and doing whatever. And I was like, this is going to be immortalized forever. This is going to be the one Ted talk I'm like ever going to give. And I'm always going to give this video and this footage for anyone who's ever going to book me ever again. So I have to look amazing. I have to, and it was like, and my therapist was sitting there watching me like go down this spiral. And she was like, okay. Um, why do we have to look like this for mm-hmm. this TED talk? And I was like, because it's going to be there forever and I want to look amazing. I want to feel great. And she's like, why can't you look amazing today? If you gave that speech today. And I was like, not good. I was like, I get this as therapy. But I was like, knock it off. I was like, these are, yeah. these are the things happening in my head of like how many pounds I needed to lose for what outfit I was going to wear. Like, uh, all these ridiculous things because I was like, this is going to be immortalized forever. And I want to be able to go back and look at it and not cringe. Yeah. And she's okay. But instead of you losing a million pounds, so you don't cringe, she's like, how can you just learn to love yourself now? So you don't cringe if you, if you shot that today. And I was like, I don't know. Homegirl. Yeah. Like, We're all like, still learning. You're, You're my also, therapist. Know. Like, Literally me and therapy, like, you, I don't want to like work through it. I want you to tell me how to do it. Like I'm great when yeah, I'm given a list of things to do and, and then I do them and then I feel better. I'm like, come on, work like, with I, me. Therapy is so great, but so hard because I just like, I want to finally admit all of my problems. And then I want you to hand me like a little potion. You're like, I'll drink this and all these thoughts will go away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yep. you'll never hate yourself ever again. Literally. Just- <laughs> if only and- that is how it worked. Oh, if only the time. I wish she could be like, and please just like uh, do this like shot of this weird potion yeah. and like, we'll drink a little green together. juice and you're going to be all good. <laughs> you're going to be good Fine, to go. Forever. Literally. Yeah. I just, so it's, it, it's hard. I'm so. We're learning. I'm, I'm balanced and I'm trying to learn how my body does not dictate what success I will have in my career later in life because mm-hmm. that's a lesson I haven't learned yet. Yes. Yeah, but we we try and y'all. Mm-hmm. We try. But mm-hmm. also, I feel like that's important to say because whether other people feel that way or not, no one ever talked about that when they were trying to acclimate into post Miss America life. Yes, I totally agree so, with that. If someone feels that way, please like reach out to me to let me know that I'm not actually like insane. I feel that way too. Um, I feel that way too. I was literally just talking to some of my friends at work about getting my real estate license and going into my new career and like doing all this stuff. And I made a comment. I was like, well, real estate agents are like notoriously hot. They are, they just are. Have you watched Selling Sunset? What? <laughs> They're so hot. And I feel like even in like little Green Bay, like the ones on the, the little billboards, they're cute. And I right. was talking to them. I was like, well, after, you know, by the time I passed my licensing exam, I need to be like, I need to lose this much weight. And he looked at me, we're literally, so for those of you that don't know, I wait just at Olive Garden. We're at the breadstick thing and we're talking and we're getting breadsticks for our tables. And he like set down the breadstick tongs and I was like, are you serious? He was like, why? He's like, you want to lose weight to have a job? <laughs> I was like, well, when you say it like that, I sound crazy. And right. he's like, well, honey, you are crazy. And it's like, like no. how dare you phrase it back to me where I, I know, know the realities <laughs> of what I did. I know this was literally me. I'm like getting breast I was like, 
oh, that is like exactly what I just said. Okay. How dare you attack me with my own thoughts with that? Literally. So yes, I totally know what you mean. And like, I'm not even done with the organization yet. It feels, it feels like I'm, I don't have a title cause we're all quarantined, but right. um, I just totally, as I think about these next stages in my life, post Miss America, I think that there are some things that I learned through the program that mm-hmm. I am going to have to get rid of. It's uh she hard. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's hard. I, you know, and literally still, I'm like, I don't have my therapist anymore, but like, that's, that was a big thing that we talked about. And which is so funny because I started therapy out of a very like depressed and like lonely place, which has so much to do with like my dating life and the fact that like I did move to this like new city and like things just weren't, you know, whatever. Like, and I was very lonely. And then it somehow like developed into this like body image eating disorder, like career. Like, oh, I didn't think this is how this was going to go, but I guess Mm -hmm. related to each other. So yeah. Okay. (laughs) So yeah, I, um, it's a very understated transition. So, Mm -hmm. and I, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, definitely. All right, everyone, that is where I'm going to cut off this week's episode because Susan and I have over two hours of content together, so I'm going to just divvy that up into two episodes for you guys, like I said in the intro. Tune in next week for an episode about dating, which is, if you know me personally, you know that's one of my favorite topics to talk about. So getting to dive into dating and body image and relationships is so exciting for me. Susan gives all of the great self-love content in that episode, so make sure that you tune in next week for another episode featuring her. Make sure that you check out Operation Not Alone, her nonprofit organization. Make sure that you are checking out the Make an Impact podcast, which is her newly launched podcast that talks all about starting up your own nonprofit and how how to combat all of the hurdles that you're going to encounter while you're doing that. So just give Susan all the love. I will drop all of her links in the description for this episode. So make sure to check it out below and come back next week to listen to even more of Susan Foch. Thanks so much, you guys. Have a great week.